Welcome to part 2 of Celestial Coordinates. In this case, we're going to be talking about spherical trigonometry. Um, now, spherical trigonometry is a very helpful tool um, for astrophysics, which is why um, this is what we're talking about today. So, imagine we have the Earth, or a sphere, maybe, because it's spherical. This is not necessarily the Earth anymore. We have a sphere, and then we have a triangle on the sphere. And because a sphere is curved, the triangle is also going to be curved. This might look something like this. Where we have A, B, C in capital, and small a, small b, small c for the sides. Now, an important thing to say is that these, um, obviously the angles are defined in terms of uh, radians or degrees, but a very important thing is that these lines, C, B, and A, small a, small b, small c, they're also defined in terms of angles. We no longer define them as lengths, we define them as angles. And basically we imagine um, this as a greater circle. We kind of extend, let's just say for B, we extend this as a circle, that's not a very good circle. We extend this as a circle, or however that circle would look like. And then we let that circle, um, the fraction of the circle which is comprised by from, uh, which, by B, is the size of B. Um, and there's special angles that we can, there's special formulas rather, that we can use in order to describe these. And simply, it is sine A, this is the sine law over sine A is equal to sine B over sine B. B is equal to sine C over sine C, where we have small letters at the top and big letters at the bottom. Uh, this is the sine law, and this is the cosine law at the bottom here. The cosine law is going. Um, the cosine law is going to be. The cosine law is going to be cosine of A is equal to uh, cosine of big A, then sine B sine C, small b, and small c, plus cosine of B plus uh, cosine C, sorry, small c. Um, now, if you want to just do calculations with this, then you can just remember these two equations. Um, these aren't too hard to remember. There are two equations which you have to remember, and if you're trying to do a, a sh astronomy competitions, then there's going to be a lot of equations which you're going to have to remember. So just remembering two more isn't that big of a deal, especially when they're not too hard to remember, right? Um, however, I don't like that mentality too much. I like to think of it as deriving an equation will make it much more memorable for you. If you actually are able to derive it, then <clears throat> you kind of go through the process yourself. Um, you will kind of learn better how to um, get these equations at any point in time. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about the derivation of both of these laws. Um, and at any point in the video, uh, I encourage you to just pause the video and go through the derivation yourself. Try to complete it yourself if you ever have an idea of where it goes. Because that's kind of the point of this. It's kind of a self-exploration. It's kind of a thing for you yourself to learn um, how these are derived. Um, so I'll start with the derivation here. Let's say we have a sphere. And I'm going to draw this in blue again because blue is an awesome color. And now let's say we have a point P on the sphere, on the outer edge of the sphere. And then we have the center. Drawing a line to this point P and directly down onto this equator plane, uh, we can define certain angles. Now let's say that this is the z-axis, this is the y-axis, and this uh, over here, let's draw this longer, is the x-axis. Uh, the angle between the x-axis and this line here, we're going to say this is psi. The angle between um, this line here 
and this line here this is going to be theta and uh, we can then let's try to express this point p in terms of psi theta x y and z um how can we do this well i encourage you to try and find it yourself um and i'll just write the equations because they're not too complicated it's kind of this is more of a problem of visualization so if you're interested in how to get these then try it yourself go around and try to find the answer with your own hands These are the three equations that can determine where these points are. You have x is equal to cosine psi cosine theta, y is equal to sine psi cosine theta, and z is equal to sine theta. Um, and like these are the coordinates for the point P, I should make clear. Now let's try to imagine a second axis. Let's try to imagine we have again the x-axis at this point, we're gonna call this x prime, but instead we rotate along the x-axis a tiny bit. So let's say this is z prime. And over here, we're going to have here, this is y prime. And we can imagine that the angle here, I'm going to write as, um, I'm going to write this as phi, the angle that is made between uh, the y and y prime and this is the angle that is rotated so we can imagine this is the axis uh, we rotate it a tiny bit so that we get this uh, x prime y prime z prime now it follows that x prime is going to be equal to cosine psi prime cosine theta prime y prime is going to be equal to sine psi prime cosine theta prime and z is going to be equal to sine theta prime, uh, z prime is going to be equal to sine theta prime. And these are, in this case, the coordinates of p expressed in terms of x prime, y prime, and z prime. Um, now, let's try to combine these. Um, let's try to first express x in terms of x prime, y in terms of y prime, and z in terms of z prime. Um, now, obviously, we have um, Obviously, we have. I'll write it over here. After zooming out a bit, obviously we have x is equal to x prime, and how? Uh, sorry, x prime is equal to x. How do we find y prime? Well, let's think about it in terms of complex numbers, and this is one of those cases where complex numbers are actually really useful. If you've learned complex numbers, then you might find this pretty interesting because I certainly did when I was going through this derivation myself. Um, but if you haven't found if you haven't learned complex numbers, then it's fine. You can just um, listen or skip forward a bit. Imagine we have the complex plane. Here's the imaginary axis, and here's the real axis. If we want to rotate a like a point one zero, for instance, or just one rather, by say thirty degrees, we would multiply it by a certain number, and this number, let's call it z is going to be equal to uh, cosine 30 degrees plus i sine 30 degrees. Uh, and that's how you rotate 30 degrees in complex numbers. Uh, let's say we have the angle, the, the point i. In order to rotate this by 30 degrees, and uh, we can imagine rotation 30 degrees ending it somewhere here, and rotation 30 degrees ending it somewhere here, we still multiply by this same z. Um, and Let's try to multiply both i and 1 by z. For 1, 1 times z is going to be equal to cosine 30 degrees plus i sine 30 degrees, because 1 times anything is itself. And then i times z is going to be equal to, um, we're going to have negative sine of 30 degrees, because i squared is equal to negative 1, plus i cosine 30 degrees. Um, now, why is this relevant? Well, let's try to imagine this in terms of x and y. Um, for y prime, what we can see is that y prime is basically the same as multiplying 1 by z. Or in this case, it's going to be equal to y times cosine 30 plus z times sine 30. Or 
in a more general case, instead of 30, we would have uh, 5. And then z prime is going to be equal to negative y sine phi plus z cosine phi. Um, and I think this is pretty interesting. We see complex numbers are useful even in astronomy. Um, and they show up in these cases where uh, it just makes these a lot easier to define. We, there's other ways to define y prime, like to find y prime in terms of y and z, but it's just more complicated. And this is a lot more elegant, it's a lot more simple. Now let's try to plug these equations here into these equations here. Uh, and that's gonna, you'll see why this helps later. Uh, so the first equation, we're going to have cosine psi prime cosine theta prime is equal to cosine psi cosine theta. The second equation is going to be sine psi prime cosine theta prime is equal to y cosine um, phi, which is going to be equal to sine psi cosine theta cosine phi plus z sine uh, phi, which is going to be equal to sine theta sine phi. And for this last equation, we're going to have uh, z prime, which is equal to sine theta prime is equal to, in this case, negative y sine uh, phi, which is sine um, psi, cosine, theta, and then sine, phi, negative, of course, plus z, cosine, phi, which is going to be equal to sine, theta, cosine, psi. So now let's try to express these angles, theta, psi, and phi, in terms of uh, the angles of a triangle. And this is going to get slightly more complicated, which is why we're going to do another sphere. Make it bigger. Now, imagine that this is the north. Like, this is, you're looking at it from slightly higher than normal. Which means that if we draw a line that goes straight up, this is the z-axis, then this is the north pole. It's not up here, we're actually saying that it's here. Uh, and it intersects this kind of line that goes through the sphere. We can kind of imagine the sphere as being a tiny bit bigger. And this is just going to make our drawing a bit easier. We obviously, now we're going to have x, which we're going to point this way now. So you can imagine this as going out from the sphere, and y, that is going this way. Now let's draw our triangle. Now, this triangle, we're going to situate the first point on the North Pole. The second point is going to go along this north kind of axis. It's going to end up somewhere here. And then the third point is going to just go somewhere here. So wherever the third point is, because every triangle is going to have a third point. Now, any triangle on, this, on a sphere can be, say we have a triangle here. Any triangle can be moved to here simply by rotating the reference which we're using. We simply define angle uh, axes x, y, and z in a different way. Uh, and now for this triangle, let this angle be a, let this angle be b, and let this angle be c. Uh, big A, big B, big C. And now we have small c, small a, and small b here. Now let's try to define uh, this point here, p, in terms of our quantities, which is theta, psi, and phi. Um, for the point P, let's first start with the x, y, and z axis. Uh, we can, similar to what we did over here in this diagram, we can draw a line that goes down and to the center. And this angle here, which is going to be in gold, this angle right here, this is psi. And this angle right here, which is curved, this angle is going to be theta. Uh, and now let's do the x prime and y prime and z prime. Now x prime is still situated on the same point, 
y prime is going to be slightly rotated up and z prime is going to be slightly rotated this way and this z prime is actually going to go through the point b uh, so for this uh, z prime y prime and x prime we're going to see that the angle here which is connecting to this sphere this is the new equatorial line for this x prime y prime z prime it's no longer this line here that's situated here it's now lifted a bit because the y prime has gone up a bit this line here that connects from here all the way down to here is our new definition for in this case psi prime and here we have theta prime, uh, where this is psi prime and this is theta prime. Now something that's really important to keep in mind is that these lines here, these two lines here, which I'm going to draw in a rainbow color, these two lines are direct extension of these two lines here. This line is an extension of this line, and this line is an extension of this line. Um, so that's just uh, basically how it is extended because these are part of a circle. Um, now we can start to define these in terms of a, b, and c. Now uh, you can go through the derivation yourself um, and kind of try to find these out yourself. Uh, but it's pretty simple and that is psi is equal to a minus, actually I'm going to write them over here so we can see them better later. Psi is going to be equal to a minus 90 degrees. Then psi prime is equal to 90 degrees minus b. Then theta is equal to 90 degrees minus b. Theta prime is equal to, this is a prime here, theta prime is equal to 90 degrees minus a. And then we have um, or psi, or phi, which is going to be equal to c. Uh, and if you don't understand where these numbers come from, then try it yourself, because that's the whole point of this. For instance, for this line here, which is theta, you see that it's a continuation from b, and this is 90 degrees, which is why it's 90 minus b. Now we're going to plug these equations into here. Uh, important things to keep in mind here we're going to be using a lot of trigonometric rules because otherwise it's just going to be way too complicated if you plug in a minus 90, etc. Cosine of 90 minus x is equal to sine of x. Sine of 90 minus x is equal to cosine of x. And sine of x minus 90 is going to be equal to negative sine of 90 minus x, which is going to be equal to, uh, which we can plug from here, is going to be equal to negative cosine of x. So these are just uh, really fundamental trigonometric equations, which uh, are going to be used a lot in this derivation. Let's start with the first equation. Uh, cosine psi prime, cosine psi prime is cosine 90 minus b, which is going to be sine of psi prime. Cosine, sorry, not psi prime, sine of b. Uh, cosine of theta prime is going to be cosine of 90 minus a, which is going to be cosine of small a. Cosine of psi is going to be sine of a. Sorry, not cosine of a here. This is sine of small a. And then cosine of theta is going to be equal to sine of b. Now, that's the first equation. Second equation, uh, sine of psi prime. What is sine of psi prime? Sine of psi prime is sine of 90 minus b. That is cosine of b. Cosine of theta prime, that is sine of a. This is equal to sine psi, which is cosine of a. Cosine of theta is sine of b. And then cosine of psi, of phi, sorry, is cosine of small c, then sine of theta is going to be cosine small b, and sine of psi 
of phi is going to be sine c. Last equation, sine of theta prime. Sine theta prime is 90 minus small a. So this is sine, this is, sorry, this is cosine of a is going to be equal to the negative of sine psi, which is a minus 90. Uh, and this is going to be equal to um, sine of a minus 90. That is going to be equal to negative cosine of a. And this just made me realize that I actually made a mistake here. And this should be negative cosine a. Um, cosine of theta is going to be sine of b. Sine of uh, phi is going to be sine of c. And this is plus uh, sine theta cosine uh, phi, which is going to be equal to cosine uh, b and cosine c. And this one is an equation that can be used, but if you look at the comparison between this equation and this equation, this equation is really the same. Equation 2 is really the same as equation 3, except there's this extra b term. Um, so we're just going to ignore this for now. It's, it can be used, but it's not as useful. What's the point? Then you can just use the equation under it. Um, and for this equation, we have these two equations. The first one, what does this look like? This looks like the sine law, right? This is sine uh, b over sine small b is equal to sine big A over sine small a. And naturally, this follows that this is equal to sine big C over sine small c, because a, b, and c are very arbitrary in this case. The second equation, cosine, is going to be cosine a is equal to cosine big A sine small b sine small c plus cosine cosine small b cosine c. These are the two equations. These are the exact same equations as the ones that we have described here. And this is the derivation for the sine law and cosine law of spherical triangles. Thanks very much for watching.